Hello everybody, this is Joe from Prep Agent. I'm all set up and we're ready to go. And today we are doing property transfer. Transfer property it is. How's everybody doing today? Give me a thumbs up if you could hear me. And we are off and running. Anybody, anybody excited? Property transfer, most exciting section in the world. I guess it's a matter of opinion. Okay, so when we're talking about property transfer, what's the first thing that should come to mind when you hear the word transfer? What do you guys think? What should come to mind? Miss Babiness 01, do not be stressed. I will be in your ear the whole time going, relax, relax, relax. Don't do it. You'll be fine. The thing that should come to mind is a deed. Good job, everybody. A deed should come to mind. Why should the word deed come to mind when we do this section about property transfer? Who knows? Why should a deed come to mind? Anybody? Probably because a deed represents evidence of a transfer, evidence of a transfer, good. If a deed is evidence of a transfer, what represents title? What represents title? What do you guys think? Or what does title represent, I should say? What does title represent? Ownership, ownership represents title. Good job, everybody. I see a lot of people are answering the question on the board, even though we're not doing that question yet. But I'll do it anyway for all you super intensos. Okay, a lease pendants. A, can be recorded no matter what type of lawsuit it is. B, may affect title to real property based on the results of the lawsuit. C, can only be removed from the public records by a court order. Or D, only affects title to real property if the owner is not party to a lawsuit. And the answer is, drum roll please, B. As in, may affect title to real property based on the results of the lawsuit. I'm using my microphone right now. I'm going to try and not use my microphone. You guys tell me if it sounds different. If you don't like it, I can go back to the microphone. Ready? Set three, two, one. Quickly open. Sorry, guys, one second. How weird. Okay, anyway, is this okay without the microphone? Sorry, I was walking for a second, so that doesn't count. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so we were talking about deeds, right? We said deed is evidence of a transfer. Okay. It's a lot quieter. Oh, I think the microphone made it sound a little off because I walked for a second. Okay. Oh, everybody's saying I need the microphone. Yeah, everybody raised their volume. Okay, okay, okay. Ready, set, three, two, one. Microphone on now. Microphone. of a transfer. Okay. Title is ownership. Title is ownership, like we just said. Now, there's different types of deeds. Okay. Who could tell me a type of deed that you need to know? <coughs> Who could tell me a type of deed that you need to know? What do you guys think?
Okay, so I see warranty deed, grant deed, trust deed, quick claim deed. Let's go with the quick claim deed. What do we know about a quick claim deed? Hola, Maribel. Como estas? Okay, what's a quick claim deed, everybody? What's a quick claim deed? A quick claim deed is immediate transfer. Immediate transfer. Okay, no expressed or implied warranties. Sounds very fancy. No expressed or implied warranties. What does that mean? It basically means what you see is what you get. All right, the property gets transferred. Okay, so when would you use a quick claim deed? When would you use a quick claim deed? What do you guys think? When would you use a quick claim deed? It's usually within family to transfer to somebody you know, a case of divorce. Usually it's involved with somebody who's familiar with that property already, if not lived in it themselves, okay? That's usually when it comes up. Okay, that's when it usually comes up. You do, money is not usually transferred. Money is not usually transferred. Basically, when you just want to change the name of ownership. Okay, so that's a quick claim deed. The other ones you have is like a warranty deed. A warranty deed or a grant deed is the one you typically use when you're selling your home. Now, when you have a warranty deed, you have a special warranty deed and a general warranty deed. What's the difference there? What's the difference between a special warranty deed and a general warranty deed? Adrian told me my, my sound is good right now. Everybody agree? Sounds good? Shouldn't try to be fancy like that like I just did before. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right guys? Okay, so the special warranty deed goes for the life of the previous owner. A general warranty deed goes for the entire life of the property. Everybody got that? That's the difference. It has to do with the duration of how far back it goes. Okay, special warranty deed goes back to the ownership of the previous person. General warranty goes the whole life of the property. It doesn't have to do with how many things they cover. It has to do with the duration. I know it sounds confusing, but that's the way it is. Okay. All right. Let's do another question on the board. What do you guys think? The right of alienation is defined as A, the right to make a will, B, the statutes of dissent and distribution, C, the right to transfer an interest in real property, D, the right to execute and deliver a deed. What do you guys think? The right of alienation is defined as A, the right to make a will, B, statutes of dissent and distribution, C, the right of interest in real property, or D, the right to execute and deliver a deed. And the answer is C, the right to transfer an interest in the property. All of you guys need to make sure you're part of our Prep Agent Real Estate Exam Study Group. Adrian, would you mind posting a link to that? The Prep Agent Real Estate Exam Study Group. You guys should all be a part of that. That is so you could um, discuss topics just like we are now with other people studying for the exam. Don't forget, if there's a certain topic you want to search, just go on the search bar on the left of that group, type in what it is that you want to discuss, and you'll find um, many conversations related to that topic, I promise. If you guys are not part of the group, make sure that when you request to be part of the group, you answer the questions properly. It's how we make sure we don't get spammers. Right, guys? Boo, spammers. We have a strict policy that we don't like people selling their junk in our group. And by junk, I mean anything, anything at all. It's not a place to sell stuff. So if they're selling any, there's nothing good to sell there. If you're trying to sell, it's junk. Do we all agree? 
That's a place for learning, not for like selling junk. Okay, here we go. What is a will written and executed entirely in the handwriting of the testator? A, holographic will, B, invalid will, C, written will, or D, intestate will? What do you guys think? The answer is holographic will, holographic will. What do you guys call when somebody dies with a will, with, with a will? What's that called? What's that called, everybody? Who knows? That'd be testate. Intestate is without. Testate is with. Boom! Everybody's getting that right. Really quick, everybody write where they're from. City and state. City and state. Where are you from? We're curious to see where he's from. We got about 250 people on this chat right now. Where's everybody from? Oakland, woo, Jersey, Washington, Los Angeles, San Jose, Glendale, Arizona, St. Louis, Missouri, Montebello, California, Omaha, Nebraska, home of Warren Buffett. Great claim there. Rucho Kangamanga. From everywhere. In case you guys are new and wondering how we have people from so many different places, and you're saying but. How does every different state be able to study for this? Adrian and Arthur and I work really hard to put these webinars together in a way that applies to everybody. So we intentionally remove the stuff that is state specific. So the stuff we go over in these webinars apply to everybody no matter what state you're in. So in case you guys are wondering how we have everybody from every state in these webinars, we really work hard to try and isolate the stuff that is applicable to everybody that you're all going to have to know no matter where you are. The stuff that's state specific, you're not going to get in these webinars. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So stuff like federal laws, like blockbusting, panic peddling, um, all that kind of stuff, that applies to all of us. What's on the board right now, personal property, that applies to everybody. Personal property, real property, these are terms and terminology that we all need to know. Okay, so that being said, let's look at this question on the board. What is required if personal property is used as consideration in the purchase of real property? A, a bill of sale, B, title insurance, C, writ of attachment, or D, current appraisal of the personal property? Congratulations, Eric, on passing. Good stuff. And the answer is A, bill of sale. Bill of sales for personal property. A deed is for real property, is what we discussed earlier in the webinar. Move right along. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. That must sound horrible into the mic. That's what you guys get for making me use the mic. You get to hear my sneezes loud and clear. Okay. According to income tax laws, which of the following is true about depreciation of land? A, land is not depreciated. B, land has residual value, but improvements do not. C, the ACRS method of depreciation can be used when depreciating land. Or D, land is considered to be 25% of the total value of depreciation.
And the answer is A. Speaking of taxes, what is ad valorem Latin for? What is ad valorem Latin for? Who knows? Ad valorem. Ad valorem. Do, 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 do. Lat ad valorem is Latin for according to value. Good, we got to know that. Have you guys ever heard of a 1031 tax deferred exchange? We do need to know that for your exam. This is a federal law, so we all have to know it. This is not state specific. What is a 1031 tax deferred exchange? Who's ever heard of that? A 1031 tax deferred exchange. So a 1031 tax deferred exchange is when you sell your property, you do not touch the money, you take the money from that property and you put it into another property. And upon doing that, you do not have to pay the capital gains tax. They say deferred because eventually you're going to touch that money. A lot of you guys are already on the board 45 on 180. And what that means is you have 45 days to identify the new property and 180 days to close on it. Everybody got that? It's a good thing to know. Not only for your exam, but it's a good thing to know is you become a real estate professional. Okay. Under which of the following types of liens can both the real property and the personal property as a debtor be sold to pay the debt? A, an assessment lien, B, a judgment lien, C, a mechanics lien, or D, a real estate tax lien? What do you guys think? And the answer is B, a judgment lien. All right, here we go. You guys follow me on Instagram? You should follow me on Instagram. Just look prep underscore agent if you're not. I'm almost at 10,000 followers on Instagram. My teenager niece could take that. She gets jealous of me with her stupid makeup tutorials. I showed her. Got more followers than she does. In the world of like teenage superficiality, I'm kicking butt. Okay, Stephanie, I'll put up more Instagram stories for sure. I will do that. Okay, if Joe dies without having made the will, it is said to be A, testator, B, intestate, C, in probate, D, A, testate. And the answer is B, intestate. We did just talk about this, Mike. Good call. You are paying attention, sir. Which of the following be treated as a credit on the seller's closing statement? A, prepaid premiums. B, none of the other options are correct. C, prepaid rents of a tenant. Or D, prepaid insurance. What do you guys think? And the answer is D, prepaid insurance. Okay, everybody ready for a tough question? Say ready. Write ready if you're ready. Who's ready? 
My question is, what is the difference between legal title and equitable title? What is the difference between legal title and equitable title? First one to get the answer right gets a big fist bump from Adrian. Obviously, it'd be a good emoji. It's not going to be a real fist bump. What is the difference between legal title and equitable title? Legal title and equitable title. Okay, looks like some of you got it right, some of you not so much. Here's what I'm looking for. Legal title is the right to sell. Equitable title is the right to use and possess and gain equity. It's that simple, guys. Don't overthink it. I don't want you guys saying, well, legal title is this thing where like the bank and something happens. And if you don't, like, don't do, I don't know, there's like a foreclosure thing or something. And I, I don't know. Okay. Legal title is the right to sell. Equitable title is the right to use and possess and gain equity. When you get a loan from somebody or a bank, whoever it may be, they're going to keep legal title because if you don't pay them back, they have the right to sell it, which is more commonly known as foreclosure. Equitable title is when you get to kick your feet up on the couch, watch TV, and you get to gain equity on that property. The value above and beyond does the amount, all right, is yours to keep. Which brings my next question. I would like you to define in the most simple and concise way possible, what is equity? What is equity? And I don't want to hear, it's like this thing where like, I don't know, the value and you sell your house and like you get money, but like it's not all the money. I want to hear a good definition of equity. Alex, we explained special warranty and general warranty earlier, and I'll do it again for you. Special warranty deed covers the property for the previous owner. General warranty goes to the life of the property. Okay, equity is your interest in the property above and beyond all liens against it. Everybody got that? Your interest in your property above and beyond all liens against it. Basically, after you sell your house, what goes in your pocket, and you could go buy a cookie with it. It's your money, okay? A lien is money that is owed. Remember, guys, lien, money, lien, money, lien, money, lien, money. You have sp specific liens and general liens. Specific liens and general liens. What's the difference between a specific lien and a general lien? feel like I got good energy today. Can you guys feel it? A lot of Starbucks going on in my system right now. Okay, specific lien and general lien. Specific lien and general lien. Specific lien is if you don't pay, they take one thing specifically. A general lien, if you don't pay, they could take everything. Everything you got. Okay. Examples of a specific lien would be like if you get a loan from the bank or a property tax. A general lien, an example would be like if you lose a court case, like a judgment, or if you don't pay your income tax. Those would be general liens. They could take everything. Everybody got that difference? That's super important. Okay. So it's really important that you guys attend these webinars because I really try and do a good job. I know Adrian does as well. He really does his best to try and put all this information we're learning in context. You guys do these questions, which is important. You do the vocabulary, but what we try and do is really kind of take a step back and get a bigger picture of what all this stuff is. The specifics and the nailing down the um, ability of taking the exam, you guys do that on your own. But this is all part of a larger study plan. You can't do just one thing. So I hope that you guys every day are either attending a webinar or listening to a previously recorded one. Everybody understand that? I mean, it's all part of a larger study plan. And the webinars is really important for us to kind of put it all in context and also keeps you guys on task. 
it keeps you guys, you know, motivated to do this and keeps you guys regularly studying. The other thing that will keep you guys regularly studying. Um, oh, congratulations, Marco Castilla. Awesome. Good job. Just passed. The other thing is you guys want to sign up for the questions of the day. Um, we have a question of the day system where every day you'll be mailed a real estate exam question, email, not mailed in the mail. And even though it's only one question, it goes along with that theory as it keeps you on task. Like a reminder, hey, you got to study, you got to study and shows you some, a concept that maybe you get, oh, I don't know that I got to get back to studying. It's all about not just teaching as material, but keeping you motivated and keeping you accountable. And we're not trying to send spam to anybody. We're not about that at all. So after you pass, you'll unsubscribe and you won't get any more of those questions of the day emails. Unless you want them. I don't know why you would. Okay, but we really worked hard to build a comprehensive system, not only to help you guys understand the material, but also to keep you guys on task. There's Adrian posting. Adrian's my Vanna White for the day. Or, or should I use a better example? That's not a good example. He's my DJ Jazzy Jeff. Is that a better, um, what do you want to call it? He's my Robin to Batman. And then when he's doing the webinar, I'm Robin and he's the Batman. Okay. The list of previous owners of conveyance from whom the present real estate owner drives his or her title is known as the A, abstract of title, B, chain of title, C, title insurance policy, or D, certificate of title. What do you guys think? And the answer is chain of title. Chain of title is the history of the ownership. Abstract is a much larger summary that incorporates a lot more than that. Anybody from Mississippi? I've never been to Mississippi. I should visit sometime. A valid deed must contain A, an acknowledgement. B, the grantee's signature, C, a granting clause, or D, and the answer is, ooh, we got a bunch of Mississippi people in the house today. The answer is a granting clause. Oh, a lien question. We did this before. Good. A mechanic's lien would be properly classified as an a, a voluntary lien, B, equitable lien, C, general lien, or D, specific lien. Mechanics lien would be properly classified as an A, voluntary lien, B, equitable lien, C, general lien, or D, specific lien. It went over this before. And a specific lien is a lien where if you don't pay, it'll come after your property. And mechanics lien is when you don't pay the workers. So that's what that's all about. Do you guys have it in your head what you're going to do after you pass the exam? Who knows what they're going to do after they pass the exam? I know I was super excited. I did the ultimate warrior um, sprint. Anybody who's a child of the 90s knows exactly what I'm talking about. But that's what I did, that ultimate warrior sprint. Who here knows what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about, the ultimate warrior sprint? Any other children of the late 80s, early 90s? Nobody else knows the ultimate warrior sprint? If you guys know that reference, then you would totally do it too. Okay, here we go. The recording of a deed. It's, it's this professional wrestler from the early 90s when he went into the ring. He like was super intense and excited. Okay, the recording of a deed. A, warrants the title to real property. 
B is all that is required to transfer the title to real estate. C ensures the interest in a parcel of real estate. Or D gives constructive notice of the ownership of real property. Cynthia says wine. How's that expression go? I drink coffee to solve my problems. I drink wine to forget about them. Anybody heard that expression before? Great Instagram post. You guys could use that if you want. Okay, gives constructive notice of the ownership of real property. So you have constructive notice and actual notice. Constructive notice is given by taking possession or recording, just so you guys know. Okay, I want to go over a really um, important concept here for one second for you guys. As you guys are studying, when you take your exam, I want you to keep in mind that you should rank the questions from hardest to easiest when you do the exam. I do a video on this, so you can watch it at another time, but basically I want you to keep this in mind. All the questions are valued the same. Therefore, you spend the most time with the ones you have the most chance of getting correct. My big little tip for you guys is do not spend a lot of times on ones that you're probably not going to get correct anyway. Has everybody got that? Don't spend a lot of time on questions that you're probably not going to get correct anyway. All right, who does that? Who's guilty of that? Where you see a question that's really hard and you kind of stress about it and you freak out about it. You guys want to do the ones that are easiest first and you do that by going through your exam and ranking them in like one, two, three, like three columns. You column one first, column two second. And if you don't have time for the last column, who cares? You're gonna get it wrong anyway. All right, many of you guys already do that strategy, but just in case, I wanna recommend it. We set up our vocabulary worksheet system on our site in that same way. We have the ability to rank all the vocabulary, easy, medium, or hard. So I want you guys to utilize that because I believe it's an important test-taking strategy to help you guys get past the exam. Remember, the person who got the worst passing score on the real estate exam is called a real estate agent, all right? Nobody cares if you got the worst score on the exam. Just pass. All right, a riparian owner owns land which borders on A, the ocean, B, a stream, C, a lake, a D, any body of water. A riparian owner owns land which borders on A, the ocean, B, a stream, C, a lake, or D, any body of water. And the answer is B, a stream. Repair and river, repair and river. A river is a connotation of a moving body of water, whereas littoral lake, littoral lake, has to do with a body of water that's standing still. When a governmental body takes private real property for necessary public use, certain legal processes must be followed. Such a taking is an exercise of A, eminent domain, B, police power, C, zoning, or D, as cheat. Okay, and the answer is A, eminent domain. Remember, our government powers can be remembered with the acronym PEAT. Police power, eminent domain, taxation, and is cheat. People confuse eminent domain and police power very often. Eminent domain, they take the property from you and will give you compensation through a process called condemnation. And police power, they don't take it from you, they tell you how to use it. That's when things like zoning come into play, building codes, um, the master plan of a community, things of that nature. Has everybody got that? Hopefully that helped. 
Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Loved having you guys. If you haven't signed up for Prep Agent already, make sure you do that so you can participate in these webinars five days a week with a much smaller group in the chat. We'd love to see you there. Adrian, post a sign-up link for us if you don't mind. And with that being said, this is Joe from Prep Agent with Adrian, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.